Watch what happens when Neymar wears a Jesus headband on live TV. This is what was filmed, and this is the live tampered version. Watch what happens in the post-interview when Bubba Watson, the best golfer at the time, wins the Masters Golf Tournament. I gotta thank uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This day means so much more than, than putting on this green jacket in many ways. All right, so a uh, technical glitch there. And see what happens when professional boxer Andre Berto mentions Jesus' name on live TV. Andre, congratulations. How did you turn this around? Uh, man, first off, I need to uh, you know, first thank my Lord save this man just you know just was goodness and grace of my life man and uh the most popular of these stories has amassed millions of views and has caused an uproar in the Christian community. But why? Benjamin Watson is a former NFL football player who openly talks about his faith in Jesus Christ. If you were to die tonight, do you know what happened to you? Even as a kid. And I said, I said, no, daddy. And he showed me John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And right there at about six years old is when I first came to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I knew that I needed to repent of my sins because my sins separated me from a holy God. He was asked to come on CNN to talk about racism and what the solution could be. Unashamed of the gospel, he risks his football career, popularity, fame, and success to boldly proclaim the name of Jesus Christ on national television. This made CNN very uncomfortable and this is what they did to him immediately after. How can we, you know, black, white, whatever, improve this? On a micro level, the issue is not really skin. The issue is sin. And I, I firmly believe that the issue is that internally we are flawed. Internally, we need salvation from our sin. Internally, our sin makes us prideful. It makes us judgmental. It makes us prejudiced, which leads to racism. It makes us lash out at people that don't look like us. It makes us look past look past evidence to protect people that look like us. It, it makes us do all those things. It makes us lash out in anger. It makes us point finger. It, 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 it wow. makes us, our sin that's in us makes us do those things. And the only, the only salvation for this sin is the gospel. The only way to really cure that what's on the inside is understanding that Jesus Christ died for our sins. And so th to me, on a micro level, it's under yeah. oh, And just like that, we lost him. Why are news stations and the biggest platforms that have millions of viewers constantly trying to cancel and censor the good name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Why are so many of those who talk about sin and salvation conveniently cut off due to technical difficulties? This is the surprising reason I discovered after doing a deep dive on why this kept happening. Take CNN for example. They are owned and funded by Warner Media, which is the parent company of Warner Bros. Warner Bros creates movies and television shows that are radically left-leaning and are opposed to everything that Jesus Christ teaches. CNN and many other broadcasting networks support, fund, and advocate for the LGBTQ community, modern-day feminism, the murdering of babies in the womb, aka abortion, and other worldly and satanic ideologies. When the name of Jesus is mentioned on TV, you can see why this does not help the bottom line and the narrative that they are trying to push forward. We know that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but Satan is using these organizations to endorse evil and wickedness in rebellion against our holy God. When the nations rage against God, it's not as though they can ascend his holy hill and fight with him. When the nations rage against God, it's not as though they can lay hold of him. How do the nations fight God? The answer is they can't fight God per se. So what they do is they fight God's people. They go to war with the church. Neymar, one of the most popular soccer players in the world, who was first shown in this video, won a soccer championship in 2015, and when he wore a headband, 100% Jesus, it was censored by FIFA on live television. When FIFA was asked why they did this, their justification was they did not want to be offending attendees and viewers sensibilities. Why is the gospel offensive? Why does the world hate the name of Jesus Christ? It is because Jesus 
says one of the most offensive and exclusive claims that this world is known and that is found in John chapter 14 verse 6. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and nobody can come to the Father except through me. Meaning that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation, which by deduction means that every other religion and every other false system out there is headed for an eternal hell. We live in a pagan, pluralistic, religious world with many beliefs and many ways to God, but we know that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Moreover, the commands of Christ go against everything the culture loves. As the world hates Christ, it will hate us. There will be persecution. They will censor us. They will try to cancel whoever mentions the name of Jesus. Why do they hate us? What's the answer? Because we're not part of the system. We exist as a non-absorbed entity. We're a problem because we're just not part of it. The world is going a certain way and we're not going that way. The world believes certain things and we don't. The world accepts certain things and we do not. The world says certain things are right and we don't believe it. We are an alien, isolated entity existing within another system, and we don't integrate. Jesus Christ is worth risking everything for. It's worth risking reputation. It's worth risking popularity. It's worth risking our jobs and even worth risking our lives if needed. People have sinned against a holy God and deserve His justice and wrath forever. And they can only be reconciled back to Him by putting their faith and hope in Jesus Christ alone. If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. This starts out as a simple conversation about water, but Jesus has shifted this conversation to something deeper. He calls it in verse 10, living water. This is more than water that Jacob's well can provide. We will see that this water Jesus offers is salvation water. It is eternal life. This living water is a gift from God. It is our responsibility and our privilege to proclaim the good news of the gospel everywhere we go. How can sinful man be reconciled to a holy God? Jesus is the answer. Although it might seem like we are in a losing battle, God is sovereign over all things. He is in control. He is ruling and reigning over all things and nothing comes to pass unless he allows it. He is working all things out for our good and for his glory for those that love him. And so we Christians do not have to worry because God has the final say and victory. The world can do its worst to us, but we know that our strength and boldness come from the power of the Holy Spirit that can never be taken away from us. If God saves us, he will sustain us and one day glorify us perfectly in heaven. Stand firm in the faith, be courageous, and be unashamed of the gospel because in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What goes into a streak to get you to the level you've been at over these last 12 games? What goes into that, Kevin? Thank God, that's all I can say, Jesus Christ. I'm up here to say thank you to God for giving me this ability, for blessing me, for shaping me. You know, first and foremost, I have to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for blessing me with the talents to play this game with the family uh, to support me day in, day out. It's kind of uh, empty in my heart, but there's a time come that the Lord has changed my heart. First off, I want to thank God, because that's who I look up to. He's graced my life with opportunities that I know are not of my hand or any other human hand. And of course, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I thank you, my King, for saving me.